Hi, it's uh, Joe Mazumdar from the January version, uh, the virtual version of the Metals Investor Forum in, uh, well, wherever we are. Uh, I'm in Vancouver and uh, with me, I've got Blackstone Minerals, uh, C Managing Director, Scott Williamson talking to us uh, from Perth, West Australia. Hi, Scott. Hi, Joe. Thanks for having me. No worries, man. Like uh, Blackstone, some people might not know is you know, a ASX listed company, and it's got a nickel project in Northern Vietnam. Uh, I've heard about the project a couple of years ago and uh, uh, put it into the letter. And and this year, or sorry, last year, 2020, I mean, nickel did well, you know, going up about 18 to 20%. Uh, you know, base metal equities did well, up 25 to 30%. But Blackstone did really well, it was up 150% last year. So can you give us a little bit of an idea of how Blackstone was out, able to outperform the market that much? Yeah, thanks, Joe. Yeah, it was a good year for us. We aggressive exploration program over at Tarqua, the Tarqua project. Also, we had the study phase as well. So we, we've put out our maiden resource and our scoping study. Uh, and that was really, I suppose, underpins what we believe is a, a long-term uh, project here. But also, yeah, the aggressive exploration. So as well, as well as that study phase, we've got ongoing drilling and, and, and regular updates on, to, the, to the market regarding um, the massive sulphide opportunity. So everyone, I suppose, likes the, the idea of massive sulphide. We initially focus on the disseminator, and that's what's underpinned this study. But now we're really getting the market excited with these massive sulphide opportunities. Yeah, you've got, I'm not sure, like eight to 10 rigs going, and then you're doing geophysics, uh, looking at electromagnetic targets. And you've been able to do that during COVID because you've basically given everything, uh, everything's being done at site by, by uh, operators there. Yeah, so there's over 100 people on site. And so the, is this is all independently I suppose, operated from head office. So head office, we have a small team, but yeah, on site, it's all local geologists in, in Vietnam. So we've got a strong geological team in Vietnam. And, and the other thing is that Vietnam has, has dealt with the, the virus very well, probably as good as any country in the world. So they've been able to lock it down. Um, it's a very strong border control, which means it's difficult for us from head office to, to access the mine. But yeah, it's amazing what we can do with some great, good local people on the ground. And, 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 you know, the cost base is like, how much were you paying, you were telling me, because you own these drill rigs, how much are you actually paying per meter? Yeah, we're down to $50 per meter all in. So that's assays, geology, everything. So it's a, it's a, it's a great, um, I suppose, benefit for us being a junior that our dollar just goes that much further. So in Australia, it would cost around $250 a meter all in. So, yeah, we, it, we're getting a lot more done for our dollar. Yeah. And also a lot of these holes are shallow. Uh, that you're doing uh, and so like to give people an idea you're drilling a resource you've already drilled a resource you got a scoping study and you're looking at doing a disseminated deposit as well as adding uh, this uh, high grade potentially underground stuff uh, that you're drilling now and, and blending that um, give people a bit of an idea how you're trying to advance the project that's right yeah so the the initial ore body is a large disseminated ore body around 60 million tonnes. So that's really underpins a long-term project. Now we're going to come in and, and find the high grade, which can go through the existing concentrator. So there's a picture behind me of the existing concentrator. The previous owners, they mined a small high grade ore body around 1 million tonnes at 2.4% nickel and 1% copper. So we're now looking for analogies to that that um, ore body that they mined, and that will go through the existing concentrator. That allows us to reduce the upfront capital required. So the scoping study assumed a brand new concentrator. Now we can reduce that capex by using the existing concentrator, and we can push out the cost required for that big concentrator into once we're in cash flow. So we can reduce that upfront capex by targeting these high-grade massive sulfide opportunities. And we're drilling out five different ore bodies at the moment. So yeah, we're, we're, we're confident we're onto one or two at least. And so, I mean, just for a bit of background, this project was owned and operated by another company and they didn't do so well. And what, what, what's the reason that, you know, Blackstone could, could actually make this thing work, whereas those guys couldn't? 
Yeah, there was a couple of things they didn't do well. They, they didn't do any exploration, so they didn't have all of these modern geophysical techniques that we're using, so they didn't explore for all body number two, three, four. We've got 25 targets that we're testing, and we're just systematically working through all of them. The other thing is the nickel price went against them. So at the time that the mine went into care and maintenance, the nickel price was $8,000 per tonne, so we're, we're seeing much higher prices today. And, and yeah, but they, they could have ridden out that cycle if they had have just explored and, and, and unfortunately, yeah, well, it's good for us because we're, we're explorationists at heart and, and we're, we're loving the, the ability to go in and, and um, I suppose open up a, what we could, we could see potentially a world-class geological system here. And the other thing is that they had to deal with an export tariff because they, their idea or they, what they were doing is uh, shipping out nickel concentrate, which is not your idea. That's right. So there's there's an existing tariff and they paid this tariff, which is a 20% tariff on concentrate. And the idea is to incentivize downstream processing. And that's what we're, we're looking to do with our partner, Echo Pro. So we're, we're partnering with the largest cathode manufacturer in South Korea and they need downstream products. So all of these battery end users in the lithium ion battery industry, they can't accept concentrate. So they need it in a downstream product and that allows us to remove the tariff. So so if we can build this downstream processing facility, it also allows us a much greater payability on the nickel products, but also allows us to reduce or remove completely this tariff, and which is exactly what the Vietnamese government is asking for. Right. And we, we, you've talked before about nickel concentrate, you know, trades at whatever, a 20 to 30 percent discount to the London Metal Exchange price of nickel because you have the treatment charges and refining charges. Whereas right now it could change in the future, but nickel sulfate and further downstream, you know, all, all the way to pre NMC trades at a premium, obviously. That's right. So the, the, the scoping study is based on this precursor product, which is the NCM 811. Mm -hmm. So there's eight times nickel to one times cobalt and manganese that trades at a 35% premium to the London metal exchange nickel price. So that's the product we're looking to deliver with our partner Echo Pro. And so, yeah, that's a, a we're going from a yeah, 70 to 80% payability to a 35% premium. So it's a significant uplift in the value of the product. And that's through um, tried and tested technology that we've used all through the mining industry. So it's a pressure oxidation autoclave and then using the, um, the chemistry with, with our partner, Echo Pro, who also brings some expertise to the table and potentially a significant amount of funding as well for this downstream. Right. So you went from like, let's say a 20 to 30 million Australian market cap or less, and now you're over 120. And so you want to take the next step. But what I've seen is that you've, you've brought in a lot of different partners, and, you know, starting off as a retail story. You've got Echo Pro as a strategic partner who've already got, who've got equ equity, but also a downstream agreement on the plant on a 50-50 capital spend. But then on your last financing, you also added some institutional equity. Yeah, it's great to bring in Fidelity, one of the largest institutional investors in, in the world. And so we've got some real long-term shareholders here. We've got a major shareholder out of Germany, also Deutsche Balaton. So we've got some really key institutional names on the register and, and also Echo Pro as a strategic partner. So we've got the long-term money that we need to build this, which is great. And yeah, but really looking forward to moving through these studies, bringing in that funding and closing the gap on the MPV. So the current MPV is a $665 million US. We're trading at about 0.15 times that, that value. So as we move this mine back into production and, we've, and we show that this, is, this will be funded, uh, then we believe we can close the gap on the MPV, which is yeah, a significant uplift for the Blackstone shareholders. So just to end the, uh, the, the conversation on Blackstone Minerals, again, BSX on the ASX, and also you, you've, you, you now have an OTC ticker, right, in, in, in New York. Yeah, that's right. We've got the BLSTF on the OTCQB. We've just recently listed and, um, yeah, really looking to push into the North American markets. Okay. So, so a, a potential investor or somebody that doesn't know much about Blackstone, what could they expect over the next six to 12 months in terms of catalysts? Yeah, so consistent news flow from the exploration front. So 10 drill rigs spinning and we're, we're targeting those high-grade massive sulfides. 
but also continuing with these feasibility studies. So moving the feasibility studies into pre-feasibility and definitive. And then, but also big, big catalyst will be how we fund this. So bringing in these major players and, and showing that this is funded and that's what's really going to close the gap on the MPV. So a big year of, of funding news, studies, but also exploration excitement, which keeps everyone excited. Yeah, definitely me. All right. Well, Thank you very much, Scott Williamson, Managing Director of Blackstone Minerals. Thanks for joining us from Perth, Australia, Western Australia. Uh, and that's me, uh, Joe Mazumdar, Exploration Insights at the January Virtual Metals Investment Forum. Thank you for joining us.